two exciting things in today's video. I'm going to share you a fun technique to make these stitch and fillet blocks and I'm going to show you all the round robins that I've worked on. My name is Irene from Sugar Do, and today is a exciting and a little bit of a sad day. Today is the last day that I'm going to work on the round robin. A round robin is a super fun activity that you can do with a block of quilters and we were doing one with my quilt B. So everyone makes a starter block, I made this one, and then you pass that block on to another member of your group. Um, so you get a new block and then you add something to that block. And when you're done, you pass it on and you will add something to the next block that you get. And so everybody can add something to all of the blocks. But now it's the final round because everybody worked already on all the blocks. I'm going to show you all the round robins that I've worked on at the end of the video so you can see what was added to it and how they are looking right now. And also I get to reveal my round robin. So the round robin that I started and how it turned out. So this is the quill that I get to work on today. And there's a lot going on. I really like the colors and lots of elements that are in here. Um, but I did have a hard time deciding what I wanted to add because there's already so much going on. Uh, so I figured I'm going to calm the quilt down a little bit in the border around it. And I'm going to go for a um, light white on white background that's also used in the white strips over here. And also here you have light uh, background fabric. So I'm going to use that again in the outside border. And then I'm going to use the technique that was used for the starter block. So the starter block was also made with a stitch and flip technique. And I thought it would be fun to bring that back in the outside border. I did some googling to find tutorials on the stitch and flip method to make those kind of squares with a triangle inside it. And most of them have a lot of excess fabric left when you finish the block. So I figured out a way to have a little bit less excess fabric and uh, make it very easy to make those kind of improv blocks. My idea for today is to make um, squares and then add wonky triangles to it. But the only tricky part here is that when you have a square and a triangle, you need to know where you have to place it. So let's say I want to have my triangle over here. I need to sew it, but before I sew it, I have to put it with right sides together. But now I need to know where I should place it. So when I place it here, for example, and I stitch it with a quarter inch seam allowance, then I'm going to end up with too little fabric over here. So instead of using just a very large piece of pink fabric here, I just want to place my triangle here and then uh, figure out a way to flip it. So for that, I'm going to make a little tool. If you like these kind of videos, you can subscribe to my channel. That's completely free and it will just keep you updated whenever I will post a new video on the Sugary Do channel. I'm taking a piece of uh, cardboard and putting on a quarter inch line for my seam allowance. There we go. And uh, what I want to do now is to uh, cut a few holes in here. So I'll just place two fingers. Looks weird, but trust me, this is going to help. And then cut this out. Doesn't need to follow the shape, but just want to have about that width of your fingers. There we go. And this is the tool that's going to help me. So how are we going to use this? I am going to put my um, square and then place my fabric that I want to sew with both right sides going up. So I still need to flip this. Then I'm going to put this cardboard piece over here. So I'm lining up my line of a quarter inch seam allowance. And then I'm going to hold down on the cardboard. I'm going to pick up my fabric and fold it over the cardboard. And then I'm going to place my fingers in the holes that I've cut. So remove your cardboard, keep onto your fingers. And then it's flipped in exactly the place that you want it. So when I'm pinning this 
along the quarter inch seam allowance that should be about over there and when I would then flip it it is exactly in the right spot yeah so that's how I'm going to use this tool I'm going to show you again so you have your square you have your fabric place it both right sides up and to be safe you can always just scoop it down a little bit so that's sticking out just a tiny bit put your tool on top of it place your fingers on the cardboard flip your fabric place your fingers in the holes remove the cardboard and then release the seam allowance so that is where you're going to sew your square let me sew it for you there it is this is sewn together so when I flip it now I see I have that little, little bit of extra room that I wiggled it down so now I only have to trim off this piece there we go that's my excess fabric on this one let's give it a press and then I can square it up and I have just a tiny bit of excess fabric on this side and on this side there we go and there we have another stitch and flip block shall I do one more so here we have a block and here I have a piece of fabric use my awesome little tool press down on the cardboard flip your paper hold in between the holes and there we have it give it a nice press and then trim off the little bit of extra fabric that we have over here and over here and there we have another block zone so this is one of the layout options I could make groups of four blocks put them together like this and then um, make shapes like this all around the quilt but that is just one option for the layout so let me first sew about 120 more blocks and then play around on my design wall Almost all squares are finished, not yet all of them, but I couldn't wait to see how it was going to look. So I put all the squares around here, um, distributed all the different fabrics a little bit. Um, so there we have the option where you pair four of the triangles together. I really like that one. But you could also make a wiggly line like this. Um, I, I think that's also kind of nice. I think that could also work in some designs, but for this quilt, uh, I guess that one suits uh, the quilt better. So um, I'm going for that one. So I'm going to um, lay everything out and then I can start sewing them together. What kind of quilting technique would you like to learn more about? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you like to see on my channel. And here it is, the final round robin. Well, almost final. Uh, I'm cheating a little bit. The bottom row is not yet sewn. I didn't manage to finish it today and the bee is tomorrow, so I'm just going to finish it tomorrow evening during our bee 
but you get the idea. I just have to attach all the borders to the block and then, uh, then it's done. I'm very happy with how it looks. It, I think it really brightens up the quilt. It makes it a little bit more airy, I guess, because of the uh, bigger light border around it. And I think it's very fun, the shapes that uh, four of the triangle blocks make together. And now, as promised, I'm going to show you all the round robins that I've worked on. I had so much fun with all these round robins. I learned so much and it really inspired me to see what others add and uh, it also was very challenging because you have to come up with something new that fits to the quilt and uh, that fits to the work that the others did. So it was a lot of fun to do and I'm really looking forward to do something like this really soon again. Thank you so much for following me on my round robin adventures. I really love that you're here. So I hope to see you next week again in a new video on the Sugar Redo channel. Bye bye!